Hi and welcome back to our channel. I'm Jennifer with my daughter Kate and today we're discussing ways that you can make the season of Advent meaningful for your teenagers. So it's the first week of Advent. Kate, how's your Advent going? Um... If that uh, sounds familiar at your house, don't despair. There are fun Advent traditions that we do with our younger kids that are great, but they just don't seem to grow into the teenage years with them, and so sometimes we have to let those go. For example, I used to wrap up one picture book for every night of Advent, and then the kids could pick a book out of the basket and unwrap it, and we would read it at bedtime. That was that fun. was a lot of fun. That's so exciting to see which book it was. But not so exciting. No, <laughs> yeah, not anymore. anymore. Yeah, it would be weird if teenagers still did that. Um, but what we want to share with you today is the traditions that have grown into the teenage years with our kids. We have some old favorites, and this year we're starting a new one. And we'll go through and explain what these traditions are and then how they actually still work for your teenagers. And I do want to say that Advent does not have to be complicated to still be meaningful. I mean, it's not your job to make it a mystical <laughs> experience for your kids. So keeping it simple is always best. And in my experience, if it's not simple, it's not going to happen at my house. The first Advent tradition that is still going strong with the teenagers at my house is having an Advent wreath. I'm always surprised by how many people don't have one. It's a very simple but very powerful symbol of Advent and you get this out and put it on the table and boom, it's Advent just like that. There we go. So I have never ceased to enjoy lighting the candle or the candles every single night. I've never outgrown this. Um, and you also don't have to have a traditional advent wreath. There are lots of different styles out there. So don't feel like you have to have the three purple candles and the pink candle. Yeah, I've done it before with three white candles and a red candle because that's what I had on hand. This year, my mom sent me this picture and she asked me, what's wrong with this photo? So she went out and bought a new package of Advent candles recently, and this is what she got. Not traditional, but she's going with it because it's a COVID Christmas. It's 2020, and we just have to go roll with the punches here. Um, another fun thing we like at our house is our Angel Advent Candle Snuffer. Do you want to do it? Sure. So somehow this this makes it even more fun. I've noticed especially that teenage boys love to fool with the candles, the wax, the matches, the snuffer. This actually makes a fun gift unique for someone if you're looking for a fun Christmas gift, a fancy snuffer. So tradition number two is the advent calendar. So when we were younger, we would have the fancy ones with like Legos or Playmobil, but now I still enjoy just having the chocolate one, having that little treat every single, every single day is still very enjoyable. Yeah, food always works for teenagers, so you can pick these up fairly cheaply at places like Aldi or Lidl, just a couple of bucks, so don't assume that just because your kids are bigger, they still won't enjoy the advent calendar. The next advent tradition that has stood the test of time with our teenagers is celebrating St. Nicholas Day on December 6th. So if you're not familiar with that tradition, what you do is you take your shoes on the night before, which is the evening of December 5th, and you put them out in front of your bedroom door, or you can put them in front of your fireplace. And if you're not on the naughty list, then St. Nicholas will come by and leave you some type of treat or present. And this still works because it's still fun to get a little treat um, when you wake up that morning. And they don't have to be anything fancy either. You know, if you're watching this on December 5th at like 5 p.m., <laughs> you can just run to the grocery <laughs> store, <laughs> store and buy some candy or some snacks that your teenagers like. It doesn't have to be complicated. And then on St. Nicholas Day itself, we always have hot chocolate with some type of treat. So generally what I do is I buy these speculose cookies from Trader Joe's. Those are a traditional type of spice cookie that works well for St. Nicholas Day. I've also made gingerbread or ginger snaps before. If you want to get really fancy, you can get a recipe to make your own speculose. 
I tried this one time. I don't know what happened. Mine turned out horrible. They were like little hard rocks. And since then, I have not been inspired to try the traditional recipe again. I just have to keep it simple. I'm going with Trader Joe's. All right, so the next tradition is going to Mass on the beautiful feast of the Immaculate Conception. So a lot of people get confused about what this feast really is and what it means. So this celebrates um, how Mary, not Jesus, was conceived without sin and then how she became the mother of our Savior. And this is a tradition that works for teenagers and anyone because it's a tradition that you never outgrow. Because the beautiful feast of the Immaculate Conception is a holy day of obligation. And that means Catholics are obligated to attend Mass on that day. But, you know, let's think about that. Why would you not want to go to a special Mass honoring the Mother of God right before the birth of Jesus? And this year, if you don't want to go to Mass in person, you can also get creative. You can live stream Mass from wherever you want. You could take it do from the Holy Land, from Rome, from a different country. There's a, You can get really creative with this. Yeah, I'm thinking Mass from the Holy Land would be super cool. Or you could track down that priest who got moved from your parish and see if he's saying a Mass and attend his Mass. Some people like to do that. So there are lots of ways to get creative with this one, but don't forget it is a holy day of obligation and make sure your teenagers understand what this feast day is all about. The next tradition that everyone of all ages at our house enjoys is celebrating the feast of Our Lady of Guadalupe on December 12th. And that works at our house because we all love Mexican food. So traditionally what we do is we either make a Mexican feast at home or we go out for lunch or dinner to a Mexican restaurant. I don't know, this year we might have to do takeout. <laughs> but whatever we have for dinner, we always have fried ice cream for dessert. And it's really easy to fake fried ice cream at home, but I still have it taste really good. So we're going to cut to a video. We're going to show you how we make our fake fried ice cream at home. All right, so here we are in the kitchen. We want to show you our cheater's way of making fried ice cream for the Feast of Our Lady of Guadalupe. So you need five ingredients for that. Some corn flakes, a stick of butter, cinnamon, chocolate syrup, and some vanilla ice cream. You could do caramel syrup too, whatever you want. And the recipe, we printed that. We'll try to leave a link below, but I just noticed that it's also on the box of cereal that we bought at Aldi. So let's get going. All right, so you're going to start off by measuring six cups of the cornflakes into a plastic bag. And then after that, you're gonna go ahead and seal the bag, and it's easier if you get all the air out to then go ahead and crush them with a rolling pin or whatever you have around. So then you are going to turn the stove on and add two and a fourth teaspoons of cinnamon into a pan. And then when you have those, add your stick of butter and melt the two together. And it should look something like this when it's done. Then you're going to add your crushed cornflakes into the mixture. And you will stir them together. And you want to do that until they are fully incorporated and golden brown. And it should look something like that. So after that, transfer the topping out of the pan into a different dish and go ahead and start scooping your ice cream into it, roll it around and get it all coated with the topping. And then once it's fully coated, you can go ahead and move it onto a cookie sheet and you will freeze it on that. Then when you're ready to enjoy it, you can put your toppings on. We're doing chocolate sauce, but you could do caramel sauce whipped cream, nuts, whatever you want. It is such a delicious treat. So there you have it. That is our fake fried ice cream. Start to finish, that only took us, I don't know, maybe 10 yeah. minutes, about 15 minutes. So this is a really fun thing to do with your teenagers or turn it over to your teens <laughs> and have them do it. 
and they do store really well in the freezer. You can just put them in and leave them till you need them on December 12th. So while we're in the kitchen, we wanted to tell you about a new Advent tradition that we're starting this year with our teenagers, and that is doing a reverse Advent calendar. We talked about that in a previous video a little bit, so we'll link that down below. So it's over here on the fridge and we'll put a close up on the screen. But basically what it is, is you have a food item for every single day of December and you collect those items throughout the month and put them in a box. <laughs> and then you take that box to the food pantry and you donate all of that food. And I'm having my teenagers do this on their own. They're going to look at the list, they're going to the store, they're doing the shopping, they're going to organize it in the box, and hopefully by Christmas Eve we'll have a nice selection of food to take with us to church for our St. Vincent de Paul food pantry. And this is just a really nice way of giving back during the holidays. So the next tradition for the Feast of St. Lucy on December 13th is to have cinnamon rolls for breakfast. So again, that's food. Everyone at our house looks forward to that. But if you're not familiar with the tradition, in Sweden and other countries, the oldest girl will dress up in the traditional St. Lucy gown, which is a white gown with a red sash, and she'll wear a crown of candles on her head, and she goes through the house delivering Lucy buns to everyone in the family. And I know some teenagers still like to do that, but no. Kate's not going to do that for no. us this year. She's not so no. enthusiastic about doing that anymore. Um, so we're still going to have cinnamon rolls and sometimes I make them myself but mostly I just cheat and I use pre-bought cinnamon rolls because they still taste delicious and they're nobody, artificial and they taste good. And nobody cares and also again it's keeping it simple. Part of the St. Lucie tradition is having the younger boys dress up as star boys. So it's always fun to get star cookies to have on St. Lucie's feast day as well. You can get star cookies from Trader Joe's. That's where I like to get them the most. But today I bought these at Aldi star cookies. These look equally delicious. Again, keeping it easy. All right, Advent reading is another tradition that we have kept up with our teenagers. When my kids were little, I would read out loud to them different Advent stories, but now that they're older, we have them read Advent material on their own. And for us, it's easy because we homeschool, and so I can just roll it right into their regular schoolwork. So I mentioned in another video, we did one about Advent books that are good for older kids. I'll link it below, but I did mention that this year my kids are reading Tommy DePaula's autobiographical book, Christmas Remembered, which is really good. And we're also reading Sister Wendy's Story of Christmas. This has different pictures, like artwork of the nativity in it, and it has a, like a paragraph about that piece of art. So it's short, but it's interesting. Yeah, it's been fun to read about the different famous paintings and the artists and the symbolism. So that's been a good addition this year. The last Advent tradition that has stood the test of time at our house is celebrating the O Antiphons, which are also called the Golden Nights. And those are the seven nights from December 17th until December 24th that lead up to Christmas Day. So maybe you've not heard of the O Antiphons before and you're wondering, what the heck is an O Antiphon? It's really not that complicated. Yeah, the, the name sounds kind of confusing, but it's a really simple tradition. You sing or say one verse every night from the song, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, and there's like activities and stuff you can do along with it. Yeah, you can do the activities or you can just sing or say the verse. I like to sing the verse, but no one else does. Nobody else wants to sing it with me. But anyway, it's not a complicated tradition, but it's a beautiful tradition and it's a lot of fun. So we are actually going to do a whole separate video on celebrating the O Antiphons the easy way <laughs> at your house. And since they don't start until December 17th, there's plenty of time to get ready for that. It's not so that is it. That is all of our traditions. Let us know in the comments what you do to make Advent meaningful for your teens, and we will see you next time. Thanks for joining us. Bye.